Hi guys and welcome back to another video. In this one we'll be painting up one of the characters out of the Indomitus box, uh, this one being the Royal Warden. He's a bit like a lieutenant, a Space Marine lieutenant equivalent, but for, for the Necron, so I'm looking forward to getting him painted up and uh, I'm testing him out on the tabletop. Um, as I normally do with, uh, with my Necrons, I'll give him a quick spray of Chaos Black followed by a spray of Lead Bulger just to get a nice smooth metallic on there. And then um, I'm going to start off with uh, some Neln Oil and this is just going to be a uh, all over uh, wash of Neln Oil um, just so we can uh, sort of bring some definition back into the miniature um, and it also provides a nice layer for us to then apply other paints on because I can find it a bit difficult sometimes to get paint to sit smoothly straight over the uh, low belcher spray sometimes. So this is just going to be a wash of Neln Oil all over uh, just watch out for pulling, uh, no need to be sort of overly neat. Um, as I say, you just really want to watch out for pulling, make sure that uh, you get a nice sort of smooth smooth layer of the Nelnol. Um, I'll be back once I finish that. With our Nelnol wash now dry, you can see it's darkened down the metal quite nicely. And we've got lots of definition in those recesses. So what we want to do now is we want to lighten that metal back up again and also start sort of highlighting. And to do that we're going to be doing a dry brush with Necron Compound. I'm just preparing the brush beside you, and uh, it's just going to be a case of going over uh, all of these uh, skeletal framework, or pretty much the entire model, to be honest, and just starting to build up gently that um, Necron compound dry brush highlight all over the miniature. Be gentle with this. Try and be as neat as you can. It is a character, uh, but I will. I'll just get that done, and I'll be right back. See how a dry brush of Necron compound has just sort of lightened the metal up, making those recess shades uh, a little more noticeable, and it's also started catching some of the edges. But what I want to do is, uh, as this is a character model, is just grab some Stormhost silver, and then just start picking out some of the um, the detail to really make it pop. So uh, we're talking sort of bits like this battle damage here. Just want to sort of paint the parts where you think the uh, the light will catch it the most, and then uh, just the top of all the the joints. Where the light will catch just to make them pop. So I'm just going to go around the model and uh, just sort of catch the areas where I think the light would catch and make all that extra uh, detail stand out. This is a character model after all. And I'll be back once I've done that. Now that our Stormhost Silver Highlights picked out, I'm going to start blocking in some of the black detail. Uh, for me, that's going to be uh, these cables at the back here. Uh, the gun casing, so just this sort of bit with the bit on the handle here as well. Yeah, the two weapon barrels and the back part of where his uh, glyph sits in there and uh, that cable, uh, that smooth cable in there. Uh, I'll be using uh, Black Templar for this just because that's what I pulled out my uh, drawer first, but a blood and black will work fine too. Uh, now you just want to thin your paints down uh, so they apply nice and smooth and you possibly need to cut the thin coats to get this on and uh, I'll be back once that's done with that black detail blocked in and drying I'm just going to quickly move on to the contrast paint Basilic Iron Grey uh, just to darken down the metal of the gun so it's going to be this bit at the back uh, this bit in here and then uh, the sort of frame that holds the, the barrels so I'll just be grabbing my Basilic Iron Grey and uh, applying that to the gun. Quick easy step this, so I'll be back once that's done. It's now time to start highlighting up this black detail. So it'll be just going around the edge highlight all over uh, the black areas we've done. So it'll be the gun casing, uh, sort of around these bits uh, in here, all edge highlight in there. And then uh, for me I'm going to make this bottom cable here and then this top cable uh, going to be black as well. So I'm just going to sort of do a bit of highlighting just where I think the light would uh, would catch. Um, so to start off with, uh, I'm going to be starting with Mechanicus Standard Grey as the start for my black highlights. Just getting some of that on uh, on my brush. Just got some thin down to the side here, and it's quite easy with the with the gun. Uh, you can sort of just go around a, a lot of sharp edges here. So it's just a case of sort of um, going around and catching all those sharp edges with the side of your brush. Just being uh, being as near as you can. 
it shouldn't take too long to get that done. So I'll just get that done and uh, then I'll be back with the next step. I've got Mechanicus standard grey highlight now done. I'm just going to grab some Dawnstone and uh, so it's going to be another edge highlight but this time I'm just going to be catching uh, the sort of sharp corners um, just to sort of give the impression that the light's catching them and it also makes them stand out a bit more. Uh, so I'll just show you what I mean by that. So I mean, to start off on this uh, top bit here, that's possibly a good one to, to show. So it's just pretty much just sort of catching just providing a bit of definition to the corners. You want to try and be neat here, try and sort of stay within the lines that you've already done um, with the Mechanica Standard Grey. Just sort of catching, catching the corners. So I'm just going to go around all the bits we've done in black and uh, finish that and then I'll be back when I'm done. With the Dawnstone highlight done, you could call it finished uh, there in terms of the black for the weapon. But I'm just going to take it one step further. I'm going to grab some Administratum Grey and I'm just going to uh, spot highlight all the corners just to make them look extra sharp and as though the light is catching them. So I've just thinned down some Administratum Grey to the side here. And it is pretty much just going to be a spot on the corners. So there should be a nice quick step. Um, just get that in shot. Yeah, it's just going to be going around and just spotting all the corners with this uh, administratum grey. And uh, I'll be back once I've done that. With the spot highlighting of the administratum grey done, uh, our blacks are now finished. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start painting in some of the green cabling. And so for the Royal Warden, uh, my Royal Warden, it's going to be this cable here and this uh, central, this big thick central cable on, on the back. So I've got some thinned down Caliban green to the side here and uh, this might take a couple of coats to get a solid colour. Um, and we're just going to start basing in uh, those cables. So just be neat, try not to sort of uh, get any paint on that black black uh, gun casing that we just, uh, we just uh, spent a while doing. And uh, I'll get that painted up and then I'll be right back. With the Caliban green now blocked in, it's time to just start highlighting up those, uh, those green cables. And to do that, I'll be starting off with Warpstone Glow. So I've just got some of that thinned off to the side here. And uh, we're just going to be wanting to sort of catch these cables where uh, where we think the, sort of the power flow or the light will be um, be the strongest. So on, uh, on this one, I'm just going to sort of start. You can sort of see with the light sort of catching uh, the cable there, so I'm just going to sort of almost start following that line a bit. Um, just sort of with the side of my brush, just carefully. Then you can make it stronger with a few more layers, sort of making that line a bit thicker as we get up to that top bit there. And uh, it'll be the same principle for this end, and uh, sort of same principle for these back cables as well. So I'll just finish that off, and uh, then I'll be right back. With that broader warpstone glow highlight now done on the cables, uh, we're going to move across to uh, moot green. And the aim of this is it's just to sort of um, catch the areas where the light will be catching the most, or again, as the uh, where we think the energy might be the strongest running through the cables. So um, in this instance, sort of on this cable here, uh, I'm just going to sort of try to stay inside the um, the warpstone glow that we've already done. I'm just going to be sort of applying. Uh, moot green just at the sort of edge here in the center just to sort of make that a bit brighter where we think the uh, energy at the end of this cable might be more concentrated just so the lights catching the cable a bit more um, so I'm going to do that on uh, the side and on uh, the cables and stuff at the back here as well so uh, I'll just get that done and uh, then I'll be back while highlighting up with the moot green, I also took the opportunity to paint in the uh, the glyph on his chest there. Um, but we're now going to be moving on to our last highlight for the green, and that's actually going to be a colour called Uriel Yellow. Uh, very little to do here really, but um, it does just help make this character model stand out a bit more. Uh, all I'm really going to be doing here is just putting like a splash of yellow just at the um, the tips of the weapons here just to sort of give it the illusion of sort of extra brightness uh, just on the ends here. So I'll do that with all the uh, all the cables and then with the glyph on the chest 
just think my paint down a bit more here. I'm just going to be wanting to catch the um, the center, and then just coming out into each of the lines ever so slightly, just to give the illusion that um, the glyph is sort of really bright in the center, and then it sort of uh, dims down as it sort of spreads out. Um, so I'll just get that finished up, and then I'll be back. The green cable is now done, it's now time to start painting in the gold detailing on this Royal Warden. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be painting in the uh, sort of patterned chess piece he's got on, on his uh, front here. We're going to be painting the uh, the area that sort of contains his glyph, the sort of frame bit. And we're also going to be painting in uh, the sort of arm decoration he's got here. And the gold we're going to be using for this is Retributor Armour. Just make sure I'm getting that right, yeah, Retributor Armour. Um, so I've got some thin down on the side here, and it's just going to be a case of blocking this colour in. Nothing too difficult, apart from just being um, being neat and uh, trying not to uh, trying not to obscure any of the detail we've uh, already already painted in. So just get to blocking that colour in, and uh, once I've done that, I'll be right back. With the retributor armour now painted on, it's time to uh, give all the gold areas a wash. And to use that, I'll be using Sarah from Sepia, just straight out of the pot with this. And uh, I'm going to be fairly sort of liberal with it. Um, trying not to get it on any of the metal work, obviously. But I'm um, just going to sort of uh, slap it. It shouldn't take too long to to get this, uh, this step done. Just sort of bring some of the definition back into the uh, decorative bits and the uh, gold work. And sort of aiming to give the, the gold a bit of an age look as well. Depending on how this looks, I might even give it a second go. But I'll just get that done, and uh, I'll be back. With our Seraphim CPU wash now down and all that gold, it's time to start uh, highlighting it. So you're going to need to grab your Liberator Gold for this. Um, this bit's possibly going to be the bit that takes the longest, I think, out of uh, the whole miniature. But uh, it's just going to be a case of, uh, with a bit of patience and a steady hand, just as neatly as you can, just highlighting up the gold work. Uh, thankfully, there's a lot of edges on this, so um, it, it should sort of flow fairly fairly easily. So I've just got some uh, Liberator Gold on, on my brush here, and uh, I'm going to use the model to help me. So I'm just going to sort of brush my Liberator Gold using the side of my brush um, across all these edges here. So I'm going to use the, the hard edges here to help me with this. should speed up the process a bit. And then uh, to do these sort of inner bits, you're just going to need a, a steady hand. Um, just uh, draw some paint on my brush to give you a bit of an example. These bits are just going to be a case of the steady hand, just sort of putting that highlight in around the shape. Shouldn't take too long once you get into the flow of it. And uh, I'll be back once uh, I'm done with that. With our Liberator Gold uh, highlight now applied, it's time to start doing uh, the face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my uh, Runal Brass, um, one of the new paints recently released by Games Workshop for the Necrons. And uh, I'm just going to start uh, painting in the face. So it's going to be sort of the side of the face, all the front bits here. Uh, and I'm going to leave this center, uh, center stripe for the time being. Uh, you want to try and avoid getting paint in the recesses, like around the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Um, and you don't want to paint this back uh, cranium bit either. So just grab your Runal Brass and with a damp brush and uh, just start applying that on. So keep it thin, keep it neat. You might need uh, two coats to get a, um, a solid colour, two thin coats to get a solid colour. And just go around carefully and uh, I'll be back with the next step once I've done that. Now that our Runal Brass is dry, I'm going to add some warmth to the sort of brass colour using the Cryptek Armache Gloss Paint. Um, don't need to apply an awful lot of this, uh, just need to watch out for pooling as well. Uh, it's a gloss paint, so you don't want it pooling too much, otherwise you get so that shiny effect. But uh, we're just going to apply that to where we put the um, Armache Gloss, uh, the uh, Runal Brass. 
So uh, to avoid pulling, what I do is, as you can see, it sort of pulls quite heavily. So I just sort of draw my brush off the edge of the miniature. That sort of fixed the pulling issue. So I'm just going to work my way around the face, carefully making sure that I'm not getting pulling anywhere. And I'll be back when that's dry. With our Crypto Karma Shade Gloss now dry, it's time to start highlighting up that sort of bronze work we've just done. Uh, for that, I'm going to be using Canoptic Alloy. And it's just going to be a case of going around the the face and the sharp edges, around the eyes, the nose, the mouth, just to pick out the detail um, carefully, trying to avoid all the hard work you've uh, you've already done. So just with a bit of paint on your brush, uh, it's just going to be a matter of um, going around the miniature, being as neat as you can, sort of catching those edges. And I'll be back once I've finished doing that. With our Canoptic Alloy highlights on the face finished, it's time to start uh, basing in some uh, parts of the miniature that I want to be white. Uh, I'm going to be painting the central stripe here uh, white, and I'm also going to be painting in um, all these recesses in the weapon here for uh, our glow effect a bit later on. Uh, for both, I'm going to be using Orthuran Grey. So what you're going to want to do is just ever so slightly thin down your Orthuran Grey to paint this here, so you get a nice smooth, uh, smooth white on the on the stripe. And then you're going to want to really thin down your Orthuran Grey, almost sort of fifty percent water, fifty percent paint, um, for this to make sort of a really thin paint, and then just paint it into the recesses. You should find the paint just sort of flows into the uh, into the recesses here. And then um, once that's dry, you just want to tidy up these little nodules with some more. Um, slightly thinned down the thorn grey, not fully thinned down, uh, just to get some nice solid, um, solid whites in those areas. So um, I'm just going to start painting in those areas with my thorn grey, and um, I'll be back when I'm done. While I'm waiting for the water down the thorn grey to dry in the uh, in the gauze weapon, there, uh, I'm just going to go back to my basilicum grey, and I'm not going to have an awful lot on my brush yet at all, um, because I don't want it to overpower the white. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to sort of apply a bit of this Basilicon Grey in the battle damage um, in the white area on the head. Uh, so you just have to be careful with this. Uh, see if I can sort of get that in focus for you. And I'm just going to sort of ever so gently apply some of this in that battle damaged area on the head there. And uh, run it into the recesses along the side of the white stripe here as well, just to sort of um, define those a bit more. But uh, I'll just do that on the other side and wait for the um, rest of the gauze plaster to dry and then I'll be back. With our Thurin Grey now applied, so I've got it in the weapon there. Uh, I'm just going to grab some uh, thin down white scar as well and I'm just going to use that to edge highlight the uh, Thurin Grey on the, on the stripe up here. And then I'm also going to use that uh, same white scar to uh, just sort of paint on the tops of all these orbs, just so that when we paint in our glow effect uh, it'll hopefully be a bit brighter. So as I said, I've got some uh, white scar just thinned down to the side here. And I'm going to use that to just uh, gently edge highlight around the battle damage on the head here as well. Just around the edges. And uh, I'll be back once I've got all that done for you. That's the white scar highlights all done now. Uh, I did notice when I was doing them that I'd forgotten to paint in the eyes, so I just went back and painted those in with my author and grey. Um, so once you've done that and everything's ready to be painted, it's time to start actually getting our um, glow effect done. And in order to achieve that, we're going to be using Tesseract Glow. So uh, a little bit of this paint goes a long way, I find. So I'm just putting a little bit on my brush. And with this, you're wanting to get inside the... Uh, the uh, gun barrels here and uh, and the eyes so we'll just make a start on that now and um, I will I'll be back when I'm done with our test right glow applied around the eyes and, and in the gun um, I'm just wanting to apply a bit of a sort of glow effect around the eyes on the face and to do that we're going to be sticking with our uh, test right glow so again you don't need an awful lot on your brush at all for this so I'm just removing most of the paint from my brush right now. And it's just going to be a case of um, just 
I'll get this in shot so you guys can see it. There we go. It's just going to be a case of just sort of pulling the paint around the eyes like that and just to create a bit of a glow effect. And we'll do it a bit on the white too. Just to give the impression of a glow. Um, I'll just do the other side and then uh, I'll be back when I'm done. And with our glow effect around the eyes done, uh, it's going to be time to start painting in this skull down, down the bottom here. So I'm going to be starting off with some thin down your shabby bone. And I uh, don't need to be awfully neat with this as long as you don't get any sort of this on your neck run. Uh, there's nothing really round here that uh, <laughs> we'll get uh, overly upset about if we get this Ushabiti bone on. So uh, it should be a quick quick process there. So just um, applying this thin down Ushabiti bone to the skull. Uh, I'll be back when that's uh, dry and I've got a solid base coat of Ushabiti bone down there. After a couple of thin coats of Ushabiti bone, we now have a nice solid colour there. Um, so it's going to be time to shade the skull now, and to do that we're going to be using our Agrax Earthshade. So a fairly simple step again here, just sort of load up your brush, not too much. Um, and then just sort of uh, slap it on. So sort of making sure you get it into all those recesses, like the, uh, the eye sockets and the nose. Around the teeth. I'll be back once that's dry. Right, to finish off the skull, we just need to highlight with uh, Screaming Skull. So I've just got something down to the side here. And uh, it's just going to be a case of very carefully just sort of going around all the edges and the sharp bits with the Screaming Skull. And just edge highlighting. So sort of around the eye sockets and um, around, the, uh, around the nose and stuff like that. So just very gently. Tip of the uh, tip of the brow there, around the nose, so around the eye sockets, around the uh, the chip part of the uh, skull up here. So I'm just going to finish that off, and I'll be back. With that screaming skull highlight done. Your uh, neck run roll warden is finished. Uh, I'd recommend obviously basing it in the same method that you've been using to base the rest of your neck runs. Uh, I'll be basing mine how I've based all my neck runs. Uh, there's a link up above and down below in the description to my basing tutorial. Um, so I'm just going to go off now and get him based and then I'll be back with the finished product. And now that he's based, our Royal Warden is ready for the tabletop. Uh, he's one of the new HQs I'm actually quite excited about trying out, so I can't actually wait to get him on the tabletop just to see how well he does. That uh, rule he's got where um, you can allocate a unit to fall back and still shoot and charge, uh, I think that's going to be really interesting, especially with the new uh, warriors of the Reaper, uh, Gore's Reapers. I think that's gonna be quite cool. Um, but anyway, as as I've uh, as I've now finished this, um, we'll leave it there. So if you've uh, if you've enjoyed the video, got any value out of it whatsoever, I'd really appreciate it if you could drop a channel a like. Um, if you're going to be interested in seeing the rest of the Indomitus box painted up, uh, then consider subscribing to the channel as well. Um, I've also recently put in a pre-order for Silent King and all the other new units that will be coming out. So. Um, if you're interested in seeing those painted up at some point and discussions about them, then uh, yeah, consider subscribing there as well. Uh, anyway, until next time, guys. Bye.